everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute, fun, interactive card. Now when I you look at this card at first, I know it kind of doesn't look that great. Like, it's not like, oh, this is some crazy awesome card, but it, when you see what it does, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, cutest thing ever for a little kid. So we're using Barnyard Baby's stamp set to create this card, and I wanted to make a 5 by 7 card because I needed the card to be bigger than normal. So my base is cut at 10 inches by 7 inches and then scored at 5 in inches to make a 5 by 7. And then I have a piece of um, Wild Wasabi Designer Series paper from the Settles Collection, and it's cut at um, 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarters. And then I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that I cut at that same size in order to layer it behind, and you'll see that. <clears throat> Sorry about my camera. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so I'm going to take the Barnyard Baby stamp set, and I am going to stamp every animal in the stamp set um, in Memento Tuxedo Black ink all over this piece of <clears throat> Crafter's Companion cardstock. Now, the reason I'm using the Crafter Companion cardstock to do my stamping is because I am going to use Copic markers to color with, and I have found that crafting Crafter Companion cardstock is the best for um, Copic coloring. It's what I like the best. Um, Nina Solar White cardstock is another one that's out there that a lot of people use, but I find that it bleeds a lot easier. And since I'm kind of new to Copic coloring, I tend to get more layers on more ink on the paper than probably necessary and so that causes my stuff to bleed probably more than an experienced Copic color. So that's a little tip for you if you're um, into Copics. So I'm just continuing to stamp all of my little animals on my um, sheet here and get them all positioned and then once I get them all stamped um, I am going to punch them out. Now I, well first I'm going to color them. <laughs> so I take that back. First I'm going to color them. Um, but after I color them, I'm going to punch them out using circles. So real quick, I want to just share, I use pretty much every single circle punch that Stampin' Up! sells. And we are retiring a couple of circle punches. So um, you can look on my blog to see the circle punches that I use to punch these out. Um, and the, all the products are listed on my blog. And the link to my blog post for this is in the description below the video. So you can click on that if you want to get more info. So I colored all my animals in and I didn't figure you wanted to sit through all of that because it took me forever because I'm super slow. So now I'm just punching them all out. And I just kind of went over the top of them and saw how much room was around the edges to make my decision on like what size punch to use. So after I got them all punched out, I went through and kind of just laid them onto this um, designer series paper so that I could get a gauge for where I would want them. Now, I have to say that they don't end up quite the same arrangement, but um, I really, really love how the little animals look on the green background because it's kind of like they're standing in grass or they're laying in grass. So that was my goal. I have a piece of basic black cardstock here and I used my embossing buddy to get um, that area covered with a, a powder so that my embossing powder didn't stick to it. And then I heat embossed this with my heat tool and now I'm just using a little terry cloth towel, a microfiber cloth actually, to rub away that powder so that it's not all powdery. And I'm just going to hand cut out the sentiment. This happy birthday sentiment is from the same stamp set. I only use one stamp set for this card. And I did cut a lot of footage out of this video just because it was super long. And it's already a long video, but if I would have left everything in, y'all would have been here till Tuesday. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to cut out um, parts of it that aren't really necessary. So what I'm doing here is just making each end of this a fishtail end or a ribbon end, whatever you prefer calling it, and I'm doing that with my paper snips. By the way, if you don't have a pair of um, Stampin' Up! paper snips, you should totally get them. They're 10 bucks and they're the best scissors you'll ever use in your life. Absolutely love them. So now I am going to, I have a bunch of embossing powder on my table. I spilled, so that's why you keep seeing me move stuff and, and wipe. <laughs> Um, 
<clears throat> so now I'm going to arrange all of my animals again the way that I want them and just kind of like eyeballing where I want all of them and then I do a super cool move that I'm super proud of because this is the kind of stuff that I see other people do and I think oh my gosh they're so cool and I never think to do that kind of thing so the first thing I did is I took my black Copic marker and I ran, ran um, it around the edges of the of the punches because I don't know the, it looked like it needed something else but I did not want to add another layer of paper because of what I'm doing but here's the part where I'm like I'm so cool I took my phone and I took a picture of the layout that I had set up so then when it was time to take all the little animals off and do my punching I was able to look at the picture on my phone to know where all the animals went so I'm removing the little animal before I punch and I punched all those holes and now I'm adding brads and through the hole and now these little guys will spin so this here I'm doing for the little duck and the little chick. Okay, so all the rest of these I punched the hole using a handheld um, paper punch from Stampin' Up. And again, if you want to know what it is, you can check it out on my blog. But these two little guys, I couldn't get the punch to the middle of the paper, so I had to use my paper piercing tool. So what I did is I used the paper piercing tool and then I kind of ran it in a circle so that it would enlarge the hole a little bit. And I have these super old brads that I have had forever that I've not done anything with. And I'm using those as my little base for my spinners. Okay, then I'm pulling away the release paper from this sentiment because I put it on a little dimensional strip. And now you can see there's all of my brads. I used dimensional tape to add it to the front of my card and all I'm doing here is adhering it down to my card base. That's it. But this is the fun part. This is the part I've been like the whole card comes together, right? Because check it out. It's all they all spin. So I'm giving this to my niece for her birthday. She's turning two and she loves to make animal sounds so i thought that this card would just be perfect for her the little chicken duck don't spin as freely but the bigger animals spin super easy and i just love how this card turned out okay if you want more interactive card video tutorials you can click on either one of these one is the color magic card and the other one's a penny slider card I would love it if you liked this video, gave me a thumbs up, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.